Disasters are a reminder of our vulnerability and interdependence, and charities rely on public support to do their good work. To shed light on the important and dynamic relationship between donors and charities, BBBsGive.org recently released a report on disaster relief donor expectations. I'm joined today by Susie DeFrancis, Chief Public Affairs Officer at the American Red Cross, to share some of her insights and reactions to our study. Red Cross has a rich history and is recognized worldwide. Please share something about your organization that donors might be surprised to know. Well, thank you, Art. Um, most people see the American Red Cross when they see a big disaster on, on the TV news. But actually, the Red Cross is responding somewhere every day in the United States. We respond to 62,000 disasters a year. And most of those actually are home fires. Um, and when you think about it, uh, when people, their house goes up in flames, they run out of the house, try to keep their families safe, maybe just the clothes on their back, they have nowhere to go. I mean, the fire department comes, puts out the fire, but where does the family go? And that's when Red Cross volunteers will show up, they'll put a blanket around them, they'll give them a warm cup of coffee, they'll make a plan for where they're gonna stay that night, maybe some financial assistance. So really, Every day of the year, there's either a Red Cross shelter open or a Red Cross uh, volunteer responding. We're always there. We asked more than 2,100 potential donors how they feel about disaster-related appeals. And we found that only 24% of respondents say appeals are very clear about what disaster response activities a charity actually carries out. Fundraising appeals are often the most meaningful contact between donors and charities and they can strengthen or weaken their bond. As a leader in the field, can you share some lessons you've learned in communicating with the donating public about how their contributions will be used? What we find is that donors want to see impact. They want to know that their donation is making a difference. And so what we try to tell uh, donors in our messaging is where exactly their money is going. So in the disaster, it's going to providing shelter for people who need to get out of the storm. It's going to provide food for them and their families to eat. It's going to provide uh, relief supplies for when they go back in their homes and they have to you know, muck out their homes from a flood or whatever. Uh, it's going to provide trained volunteers in mental health who can come help people in the shelters kind of deal with what they're dealing with. And it can provide financial assistance. So we try to be very clear. Um, but beyond that, we also try to show them, take them to the scene, show them exactly what's going on. We've been using Facebook Live or we've been doing videos. So uh, donors can actually see, oh, there's the meals getting prepared. There's the, meet some of the people that we're serving and how we're helping. We also found that expectations about how quickly charities should spend collected funds are not uniform. For example, approximately one-third of donors assume that charities will spend their contributions as quickly as possible. But other donors assume that a charity will spend money over a longer-term period to take care of longer-term needs. How does the American Red Cross manage this diversity of donor expectation? Well, obviously with any disaster, we're going to rush to serve the immediate needs. And those are what we typically call emergency relief. So that's food, shelter, uh, financial assistance, these things that help people right in the immediate aftermath. Um, but then if we're able to raise enough money to cover those needs, then we will put money into what we call long-term recovery. We try to spend it quickly, but also wisely. And if we have enough dollars to spend over the long term, we do. And, and we can assure donors that if they designate for a particular hurricane, say it was Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico, that money is going to stay in Puerto Rico um, to help with the, all the needs. Donors say that news media is the strongest influence on their disaster response giving decisions. Please tell us how you see the relationship between the American Red Cross news media and the donating public. Well, media are a really important partner uh, for all of us in the disaster space. Um, they do a great job of covering the disaster. And also on their websites, they often say, here are the charities that are there, the, how you can help. We have spokespeople that, that talk to them, that tell them what we're doing, show them what we're doing. If there's anything maybe they could do better, I think it, um, 
it's worth noting that j when the cameras leave and pack up and go home, the disaster is not over. And there's still a lot of people who are dealing with the aftermath. And so it would be great if they would come back every once in a while to show how people are doing maybe six months or a year after a disaster and, and still highlight the need that's there. Susie, thanks for sharing your reactions and insights. Thank you, Art. And, and one thing I'd like to mention is to thank you and your organization for doing this kind of research into disasters. Um, the more the public can learn about what goes into their dollars and how they're spent, uh, the more comfortable they are in giving. And certainly, um, we rely on the public, uh, to their generosity to help people in disasters. And so we appreciate this research that you've done. To learn more about Give.org Disaster Relief Donor Expectations Report, please visit Give.org.